So my name is Joe Adams. I'm Melissa Adams. And we planted Mana Church Colorado Springs in January of 2018. So around 16 years old is when I felt like God was calling me into full-time vocational ministry. But the idea of church planting wasn't a part of that. Um, it actually wasn't until I was a campus pastor at, a, at Manor Church in North Carolina, and we went to art conference. And I was sitting there in an art conference session, and a church planter got up and just told his story. And it was the craziest thing, because I was sitting there in that session, and as he's speaking, I just began to like weep in the middle. I'm trying to hide it. Like I'm just tears are coming down. My heart just started to burn. And all of a sudden I went, I think I'm supposed to do that. And um, that actually launched for, for both of us a season of really praying and seeking God and going, God, is this something you have for us? I felt peace about it. Um, and I knew that it was something that was supposed to happen. So I didn't know exactly how or what it was gonna look like for us, but I did feel like, yes, we are supposed to do this. Yes, it's going to be hard, but if God's called us to do this, it's going to be okay. So after we had prayed about it and really since like, hey, I think this is something God is calling us into, um, we went to actually set up a meeting with my senior pastor there in North Carolina just to, just to submit it before him and say, hey, what do you think about this? Like, do you see this? Um, are, are you in on this? And so I, I had that meeting I set before him and I said, this is what we feel like God's like stirring up in our hearts. What do you think? And it was in that meeting that he looked at me and he said, Joe, it's interesting you should say that because let me tell you what God's been speaking to me. He shared with me this vision that God had given him to actually plant an expression of Mana Church near every U.S. military installation around the world. My dad um, grew up in a really kind of non-God-centered childhood, but then joined the military. And during his time in the military, came to the Lord, and it was some guys who were connected to Mana Church in Faithful North, Faith, North Carolina. And through that journey, he decided that he was gonna actually stop his career in the military, which prior to that point, he was planning to go make it his career. Um, he decided he was gonna pull back from that and go into ministry. When I heard about where my dad came from in his past and the father that he was and the ministry that he led and the way he treated my mother and just the family he built, it was incredible. So to know what God can do in transforming someone's life and in transforming the trajectory of his life and then essentially mine and my family's, it's a powerful thing. When we were looking for cities, we were given about three different bases we could choose from. And we got here in Colorado and it was in, I think, February. It was beautiful. And we just felt a peace, I think, in our souls. Mm -hmm. um, there's a real strategic piece about going to these cities that had military presence there. Uh, because in, in Fayetteville, North Carolina, Fort Bragg is the largest military base in the world in terms of population. And so they're sending people out all of the time. Um, year after year, just thousands of people moving to these different cities. And what would happen to us is, is they would always email us back and say, hey, we love Mana Church. Do you know a church like Mana? And, and then fill in the blank, whatever base they were at, whatever city that they were going to. And sometimes we did, sometimes we didn't. And then we just had this, you know, part of this idea that we believe that God gave our senior pastor is why not bring Mana Church to them? And so what we found is that as we go to these cities, when Alyssa and I moved here to Colorado Springs, there were 10 families stationed at Fort Carson Army Base that had been a part of Mana Church in North Carolina before. And so we were able to, hey, you guys, let's let's build this launch team. And so we always tell people, hey, we're, we're a church for the city with a heart for the military. And we believe that God has called us to equip and empower His people to change their world wherever they go. And we have a lot of families, you know, they're here for two years, they're here for three years, and they get sent out somewhere else. And we've just embraced this reality of going, all right, you're here with us for a short time. We're gonna invest in you like you're with us forever. And then we're not losing you, we're sending you to that next place so you can go and advance the kingdom of God wherever you end up. Yeah, I think the, the whole church planting journey is so full of the highs and the lows. And as you're going through it, there's these moments where you're just so full of faith 
and expect it for God's God called you to do. Like, you know, he's called you to the city. You know, this is his church. Like, he's going to do it. Like, he's going to build it. And then something happens. Something doesn't go the way you anticipate it. And it's just like the enemy comes in and just loves to steal that faith, that joy, that expectation. And so I really felt like um, there, there was a constant battle uh, for our peace, a constant battle for our faith of going, no, God, you're in this. And regardless of what the circumstances look like, like we're going to trust you. You know, 10 months, 10 months of preparation for this one uh, launch Sunday. It's going to be a blizzard on our lunch day, like an actual blizzard. Yep. And so we were unsure if anyone was going to show up. And I remember I just got down on my knees in our bedroom and was like, God, this is yours. Yeah. It, it's got to be about you. It's always been about you. So whether nobody shows up or hundreds of people show up, we're starting Mana Church Colorado Springs today for your glory, not for anyone else's. And I'll never remember about 15 minutes before service, finally I was like, okay, I'll check. And I looked outside and there was just this line of cars pulling into the driveway, people walking in, the wind's just like blowing, they're huddled in, but they're walking into the service, the auditorium starts to fill up. What is happening? And God showed up, Mana Church was born. And, uh, and it began, began this journey of just what I would call the miraculous work of God and provision of God time and time again yeah. throughout our, our story. Yeah, so I, got a, I went to Colorado Christian University, actually, so I had a little bit of a Colorado connection there. But I got a, a degree in biblical studies from Colorado Christian University, which was great. Um, and then I moved to Fayetteville, North Carolina to be a part of Mana Church there. My first job was actually as a janitor of the church. So my very first paid job in ministry was cleaning carpets at the church building, which was fantastic. Through that, just had a lot of different opportunities um, within the church just to see what ministry looks like kind of behind the curtain. And um, I actually had the opportunity to become the personal assistant to the senior pastor of Mana Church in North Carolina. And did that for about a year and a half and really got to see behind the scenes of what it looks like to lead an influential church um, in a city. And it was incredible. And I would actually say that my time in that was far more beneficial to prepare me to lead a church one day. But then while I was there in North Carolina, um, I, after I became, becoming a personal assistant, uh, I was a, what they call a site pastor at one of our locations there in the city. So I did that for about three and a half years. And while doing that, I also went to and got my master's degree. Um, so I got a master's in Christian leadership. So it was really cool because I had the classroom theory of organizational leadership in a local church. And then I had the practical application of, I have to lead this, this site, this, this campus. So what does it look like? How can I apply these principles? And so having the opportunity to be able to practice while I learn was really helpful. Um, and I think really that set us up well to come into Colorado Springs, into this new city, to, to launch Mana Church and go, okay, I have some experience. I got to see behind closed doors. Now let's start to apply these principles and let's apply this training that we received. But there's only like, I never took a course on navigating a pandemic. I actually never took a course on navigating disgruntled church members. <laughs> you know, like that, that never happened for me. So, so mm -hmm. learning these things um, firsthand, thank God for his grace yeah. and his faithfulness in those times to carry us through. A really big discussion that we had um, going into this thing is, hey, what did these roles look like? Because, you know, we'd already been in ministry and we knew like people are gonna have expectations of you. Well, you can't control those, like they will have expectations. And I remember we had that discussion and I, and I said, sweetie, you get to decide what your role is going to be. And I don't care what anybody else's expectations are. We're gonna do what's best for you, for our family, for Mana Church, Colorado Springs. And he was just, he was very frank. Alyssa, don't worry about it. You don't have to fit this mold of being, you can only do this or you can only do it this way. Like he said, like you need to do what God's called you to do and what's best for our family. And so for me, that, that did look like a more of a behind the scenes role. And so walking into that, and, and, I, and I did feel like just the freedom in that. It's like, if God says to do it, 
He's going to help us. Yeah. And I feel like that's just a promise that God has. So if God's called you to do church planning, He's going to carry you through. He's going to yeah. help you. He's going to He's going to give you the vision and the means to do what He's called you to do. So I do love connecting with people. And I do love mentoring women. I do love seeing people's lives getting transformed. So for me, that's been serving in mannequins on a Sunday morning, or that's been leading small groups that I'm mentoring women in, or um, connecting with other people. Yeah, so. and I want to say too, she is dynamic when it comes to one-on-one -on -one discipleship or small group discipleship. She's one of the best small group leaders I've ever seen. And so many women would, I, and they tell me this, so she wouldn't say this about herself, but they tell me this, like their lives are not the same because my wife took a season and just invested and imparted um, week after week, going through Bible studies and being with them in their challenges. And, and so I think some of the greatest fruit that we've seen in, in the church has come from even these one-on-one -on -one conversations and discipleship moments that she's had with these different ladies. Um, so yeah, we're, we're actually very excited about what God's doing, um, not only right now, but we feel like He's given us fresh vision for the future. And one of the things we feel like He's called us to is to be a, a hub, um, like a training center for planting and launching churches in this mana church movement of planting churches near the military highway, near these bases, military bases. So we, we feel like God's called us to be a hub, a training center where we're raising up church planters in-house. We actually have a, a college that's a part of our, our network. It's called Mana University, fully accredited where you can get degrees. And so we're getting people in and taking them through that college, getting their degrees there so they can step into this and be prepared for that. So we're excited to be not just a place where we reach the city, but a place from which we send out planters to reach the nation and then reach the world. If God says to do it, He's gonna help us. Yeah. And I feel like that's just a promise that God has. So if God's called you to do church planning, He's gonna carry you through. He's gonna yeah. help you. He's gonna He's gonna give you the vision and the means to do what He's called you to do. So. Mm -hmm. Don't plan a church because it's a good idea or it's a noble idea. Find a church because God has called you to that. <laughs>